Welcome to this week's Wednesday Silver Lining. So, I recently found out that last month some archaeologists in India found 500 or so Mysorean rockets. Basically large bottle rockets used for warfare in the 1700s by Tipu Sultan. It's an interesting name. So it's kind of cool. Like it's not every day that you have archaeologists digging up rockets, so I thought I'd include that. Speaking of rockets, on the 3rd, in a couple days, they're going to announce, uh, NASA is going to announce, what, uh, which astronauts are going to be on the Boeing and the SpaceX crewed capsule launches. And so that's looking pretty good, I believe. Well, so Boeing... I don't think they've even flown their capsule yet. SpaceX has flown an earlier version of it and they're just getting ready to fly it. And I heard that according to the ASAP, which I think is like aeronautic safety, something, whatever, they did a test of the safety between Boeing and SpaceX. And Boeing had like a really, really bad failure with one of their, I think it was like their escape motor or something like that. They were like leak, leaking hypergolic propellants, which is a really bad thing because it's like corrosive to skin or something like that. While SpaceX actually came out in the report as being almost ahead. So it looks like Boeing might be losing this battle. So not only did Boeing get like 50% more funding for this, they also don't have to make it reusable. At least I don't think so. Or maybe that's just the main SLS, Space Launch System. I'm not sure, but either way, with SpaceX, you're getting a lot better of a vehicle and a lot better of a, a lot more trustable of a design. Because honestly, I just, I just don't trust Boeing and stuff that much. They just seem to have so many issues, like all those big government contractors. But I think because a lot of them get very complacent with their abilities to do things, and so they don't, they don't really care as much. It's just like, oh, just crank out another device for the billion dollar project or whatever, whereas SpaceX, if they fail at this, well, that's kind of a, a really big problem for them. So there's a lot more pressure for them to, to get it right. And at least that's the way I see it. Yeah, so in a couple of days, they're going to announce which astronauts get to go on the, the Boeing or the SpaceX launches. And if I remember correctly, SpaceX needs to launch their Falcon 9 Block 5 rocket at least the first stage, seven times, I think, before they can launch with a crewed mission. So that has to be with the new CLPV, Composite Overwrap Pressure Vessel. Pressure vessel. That's basically, I think right now, they're still using the metal pressure vessels, but and because after like 2016, that, that explosion, they had to re redesign their pressure vessels and they had to pay a lot of attention to those so they don't blow up the rocket again. And I'm not sure if the newer rockets launches have been doing using the CLPVs yet, but if they are, which I think they are, then they only need to do a few more launches before before they have the seven launches to do the the crude test. So that's actually pretty cool. I believe the next launch is the 7th, so next Tuesday, and I'll, I'll probably be watching that live. I also saw that Virgin Galactic made another launch test of their, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the airplane. It, it's, well, it's a space plane, sorry, but it got up to like 2.5 times the speed of sound, and let's see, about 32 miles up, which is pretty good. After they lost the pilot and the ship before, they, they're they kind of starting over and kind of going up higher and higher. So it'd be interesting to see how high they can go. Honestly, I'm not too interested in it right now, but whenever they start going into orbital speeds, that's when I get interested. The whole suborbital tourism doesn't really interest me that much, actually. And lastly, I want to talk about today's Google Doodle. Kind of led down a nice little rabbit hole. I do love reading up about 1930s and 1940s journalists and civilians. I'm not 
as interested in like military stuff. I'm more interested in how it affected people because World War II and like the Spanish War and everything really affected people way too much. And so today, today's Google Doodle was about Gerda Taro. Gerda Taro? Taro? Whichever language you want to say it in because I believe she she used the like the pen name or whatever. It was inspired from Japanese, so then Bitaro, but I believe she was German, so Bitaro, or whatever. Taro. I don't know. It's... Anyway, it was a nice little rabbit hole to, re to read, and yet one more female creator of the 30s and 40s, well, not so much 40s for her, of that era that is really interesting. Like, there was a good number of especially journalists of that era that were female and really interesting but lived very short lives although I guess a lot of people in that era lived pretty short lives kind of like Anna Marie Schwarzenbach I think she died in like 1941 although she died in a bicycle accident but I mean Gerda Taro Taro died in um, yeah maybe I should just call it Gerda Taro maybe like that she's German maybe just call it that she died in the Spanish Civil War, being back, run over by a tank and re reversing over her. So that's pretty bad. But it's interesting. Another little side note to that little rabbit hole to jump down. A photo of her on her deathbed recently surfaced this January. And it definitely looks like her. And I mean, it's sad, but life is sad. So I don't know, just that was kind of. I never heard of her before, and I'm really happy that Google did a Google Doodle, and I really liked it. Because I love, I love reading up about the 1930s for some reason. I really love it. And it's a real shame that so many of those people died. Some people just die, and horribly. Yeah, life's rough, no doubt about it. Well, shoot. Once again, I did not end the Wednesday silver lining on a good note. But maybe that's the key. Have a good have a have a good note throughout it and then in a little bit of a bad note and then <clears throat> it doesn't leave you depressed, but it leaves you wanting to make the want to make an improvement on the next week. You know what I mean? Cause I think the issue with the mainstream media is that there are they're, they only have like a piano with one key. They only know how to do everything on a bad note. So of course they end up on a bad note. But if you always end on a good note, and if you always have a good note all the, all the way through, then it's just vapid and doesn't have any consequences and doesn't, doesn't remind you to be better and push things, push the world to be better in your own little way. That makes sense? I don't know. Lastly, a little side note to so like idea 4.1. I heard something interesting today, a phrase, I think it was on um, Beam News or something like that. Dr. Judson Brewer, director of research at the UMass Center for Mindfulness, told me that our brains crave simplicity. They want to see the world in black and white, so we're vulnerable to broad tweets that lack context. That's dangerous because we can trick ourselves into thinking we know the whole story when we're just reading a long headline, essentially. Modern news is just long headlines. And that really explains it. I mean, that's, that's a really good way to put it, I think. That modern news is just really long headlines. I don't know, just, uh, I, like, I like the wording of that, because, well, I don't like it, but I like how accurate it is and how it really crystallizes the problem that we have. And I mean, like, if only we could have journalism like back in the day. Now, to be honest, there most likely are still a lot of journalists that are doing a great job, but a lot of journalists just look up on Twitter for what people are talking about and just kind of, they don't really do anything. And I think it kind of puts people like Gerda Taro and Anna Marie Schwarzenbach to, to shame, I guess, if that makes sense. 
because there's a lot of a lot of amazing people back then, and not as many now. Like I would even say that Lenny Riefenstahl was amazing, an amazingly good example of what not to do. And I also would consider her dead after World War II because her career was basically dead and bur buried after World War II. So I would kind of put her, I would kind of put Lenny, Lenny Riefenstahl in the, the same group of fallen, interesting creators as Goethe Taro or whatever and Anna-Marie Schwarzenbach. I don't know. Well, that's probably enough. There's not actually that much mo uh, news this week, but I don't know. Hopefully next week there will be some news and maybe some names for astronauts that will be going on the missions. I don't care so much about the individual astronauts. There is a bit of like a, a hero culture behind astronauts or around astronauts that I never really got behind. I can definitely understand like Mr. Hadfield, but that's not so much that he's an astronaut or that he's an interesting person to listen to. Although his son who runs the channel Rare Earth is, I think he's even cooler. Well, not cooler. He he impacts my life even more because he makes amazing videos. You guys need to go watch Rare Earth. It is, it's rare. It is, it's like a little mini documentary series that shows you little bits of history around the world. A lot of them kind of sad stories that are forgotten, but stories that shouldn't be forgotten. And some of them are a little like looks into cultures around the world and stuff. It just it's so amazing, like little mini documentaries. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this Wednesday silver lining, and I hope you can find the silver lining in your day too. If that makes sense. I'll have to work on the outro for this. But honestly, I think it's very easy to find the silver lining because like things have been much worse before this, and things are actually pretty darn good now. Like really good. Really good. Like, we don't really have civil wars with amazing journalists being run over by tanks anymore. At least, not as often. So, that's interesting. I mean, it's, it's a good thing to keep in mind, because things are actually really going up. Like, really getting a lot better. At least for the most part few little problems along the way, but for the most part, yeah, things are actually going really darn good. 